Hey traders, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'd like to go over some of the major red flags that I look for before entering or exiting my trades. Now, this video may be pretty long because I'd like to go in detail both for my Discord and for anyone following these trades to really get an understanding of what to look for to avoid major losses, but also what to look for to hopefully extend gains. Out of respect for your time, I'm going to add chapters to this video, so feel free to skip to any chapter you feel applies to you more so than the rest. The only one thing I ask in return is for you to smash that like button and let's get right into the video. One major key factor and red flag to look for is going to be low volume. I'm looking at a ticker HUSA, which is an oil and gas stock that we typically trade in our Discord. Uh, but what we could see here is we were ticking up into a resistance that I had, and unfortunately we didn't have the volume to support a trade. So this was the red flag on HUSA. So low volume is the key factor. If you look at the top, you can see the volume at the top once you scroll over each one of these candlesticks or you can just check the candlesticks below compared to the ones previous to it. Or you can even just look at the candlesticks themselves on the chart uh, and actually see that some of these are just dashes, which usually represent that there's barely any volume to be had. So for me and myself, uh, especially trading confirmation strategy, I'm looking for a confirm or a close over my resistance. Of course, this resistance did not see that close over that level, but even if we did on the spike in volume here, it wasn't supported by much volume beforehand, so this would be my first red flag. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that I wouldn't take a trade on HUSA, but it means that I have to keep this red flag in mind while trading, so I need to tighten up my stops and reduce my risk accordingly if I decide to take a trade here. But it doesn't fit the strategy 100%, so low volume is one major factor when looking at these trades. One of my favorite looks on the chart when trading the confirmation strategy is for the ticker to come down to a support area, break below and close below support. Now support acts as resistance. Once we close back above that resistance, I look to get in this trade. The only red flag that I see on HUSA here is the lack of volume. Due to lack of volume, I either wouldn't take this trade or I'd greatly reduce my size. Now let's take a look at HUSA when we have enough volume to support a trade. We came down into a support area, closed below. This is my favorite setup. We now test that support as resistance. So 615 is now acting as a resistance. We broke above and closed above 615. We then test 615 multiple times before moving up to our next level of resistance, which would be a target. We hit our target at 677. Often this is where I'm gonna shave my size down or take my scalp wall together. This would be a target hit from our 615 entry. Of course, we then broke 615 and started to increase in volume. This is a great sign. In the first example, we had lack of volume, which was the major red flag. In the second example, we had enough volume to support our trade. We then had our confirmation strategy with support and resistance levels marked out. Once we broke above resistance, we then held as support offering a trade from 615 all the way up to 816 target or 860 high. This was a great trade on ticker HUSA. Now I will admit that volume is a major key factor, but it's not the only red flag to look for. There could be ample volume, but there is other red flags that we need to keep in mind as traders. Let's go over those now. I know what you're saying right now. How is a bullish vertical trend a red flag? Well, I'll go over this in this example now. As we can see here on ticker NRSN, on the one minute time frame, we had a complete vertical bullish trend. In other words, the stock just ran vertical so fast within a few minutes and smashed through multiple resistances. Now, I know it's hard to believe a bullish vertical trend can be a bad thing, but in this case, NRSN moved up about 89% within four minutes. It's hard to believe after a move like this, there isn't gonna be a pullback. This is why when managing risk, a bullish vertical trend can sometimes be looked at as a red flag. Now, I'll be the first to admit that I have been wrong before. Sometimes the stock will continue in its bullish trend and just keep smashing through levels of resistance. 
Now this is fine. It doesn't mean I won't take the trade, just means I'll have to keep this in mind when trading. I'll either greatly reduce my size and tighten up my stop, or I just won't take the trade at all and look for a better opportunity elsewhere. In this next example, I have ticker QNRX on a one minute time frame. As we can see here, it made a bullish vertical trend. Now, it didn't make 89% move in four minutes, but it did have over six green one minute candles in a row. I account over five green candles in a row to be a bullish vertical trend on a one minute chart, especially if the candles are larger than the previous candles before. As we can see here, we had exactly that. Six green candles that were larger than the candles previous, signaling a bullish vertical trend. This can be looked at as a red flag. When I'm trading the confirmation strategy, I look for a candle to close over resistance to then hold a support. In this case, we had that candle close over that 75 cent resistance, but then close back below support the very next candle. This was a bullish vertical trend, and for myself, this would be a red flag. Again, this doesn't mean I wouldn't take the trade, just means I have to keep this in mind when trading. Usually for me, this means I'll be less aggressive than I normally would be if I saw the perfect setup. Of course, this isn't the perfect setup for me, and I have to keep this in mind before trading. Knowing this, I either won't take the trade, or I'll tighten up my stop and greatly reduce my size just to reduce my risk. Here's another example on ticker EVFM on a one minute chart. As we can see here, we had five green one minute candles, signaling a bullish vertical trend. We then had the very next candle close below support, signaling a bearish trend. We then closed back above, signaling a bullish trend, and then held from that level. That red candle that closed below support, this makes sense to me because of that bullish vertical trend. This is the red flags we need to look for before trading. In this example of ticker IMTE on the one minute time frame, we can see six one minute green candles leading up into resistance $3.50. Now, this is also a half dollar test. You would think that a close above 350 would be a strong move to then hold the support and move up from there. In this case, the very next candle retraced back below 350 support and closed lower lows. We can contribute this to that bullish vertical move on the one minute time frame. Here's a great example of six green candles just blowing through resistance, making its way to the next level of resistance I had on my chart. When focusing on risk management, this isn't the ideal setup for myself. Now, doesn't mean I won't take the trade, just want to keep this in mind before trading. I'll just be less aggressive at that break of resistance. Here's another example of a bullish vertical trend yet blowing through resistance and continuing up. We had six green one minute candles all leading up into a resistance that I had marked on my chart. Now we had the candle close above resistance signaling a bullish trend. Even though we had to retrace the very next candle, it never did close below resistance now acting as support. We can see it made its bullish move all the way up to our next resistance signaling a target hit. In this situation, I just have to be less aggressive and be aware of my surroundings. In this case, we were in a bullish vertical trend, so it's one thing to keep in mind as a possible red flag before entering into my trade. Now that we've gone over the bullish vertical trend and how it can be looked at as a possible red flag, let's take a look at the next major key factor I look at before entering my trades. In this next chapter, I'll go over how I use recent chart history in major reds to dictate if I'll take the trade or not. Although looking at chart history and using major reds to dictate if I take a trade or not seems pretty simple, most traders will overlook this step. By simply zooming out on the chart, we can get a wider picture of what's going on. We can then spot major red candles that could be a possible concern before entering our trades. For myself, of course the percentage varies on the price of the stock, but often anything over 4% negative is going to be a major red flag. So if I see a candle that's a negative 4%, negative 5%, 6% or more, this is going to be a major red flag before entering my position. Now let's take a look at that on the chart. We've got our close above resistance 377. So I want to take a confirmation trade here. Once we've confirmed above that level of 377, it should now hold as support. I'm looking to go long from 377 on. Oh great, looks like another loss added to the collection. How could I avoid this? Where was the red flag? As we can see just by zooming out on the chart, we had some major red flags to look for before entering our trade. 
We have major red spotted on the recent chart history, which is a major red flag for myself in trading. By hovering over each one of these candlesticks, we'll see in the top of our screen the percentage change. We can now see the major negative percentages on these major red candles on the recent chart history. By looking at this recent chart history, we give ourselves a better idea of what to expect. Whenever I spot major red candles like this, especially one that equates out to 9% negative, then usually if I do take the trade, I just have to be a lot less aggressive. Now, when focused on risk management, this would be a lottery play at best. Although this is a simple step, it's often overlooked by many traders. All we have to do is hover over these major reds and we can see at the top of our screen the percentage change. If we see these major reds in negative percentages, this could be looked at as a major red flag. Oftentimes, I'm trading the confirmation strategy and I'm looking for that confirm over resistance. Once I see it, I like to enter into my trade. But if I don't look at recent chart history, I could be in for trouble. Now, if I look at that recent chart history, I can then spot major reds on the chart and decide if I still want to take this trade or not. Oftentimes, the answer is no. When focusing on risk management, this wouldn't be a trade worth taking. In my experience trading, sometimes it's better to look for higher quality setups rather than just taking every trade that comes my way. I don't want to get caught over trading, especially in a bearish market. Now, there's a number of ways to go about this. I often just hover over each candle and look at the percentage at the top of my chart. This is the easiest, in my opinion, the fastest way to do so. There's also indicators that will actually set the percentage of each one of these candles on your chart for you, which is pretty cool. So anyone in our Discord, I'll add this to our Discord so you can have this in our script channel for free. So pretty simple, right? Anything with a major red candle in its previous history, especially recent history, I have to keep this in mind before trading. This is a major red flag for myself. This is why often my favorite trade happens after breaking news. After a major spike in price action, we can see after a few pullbacks, recent chart history to then dictate our trades in the future. Now I'd like to go over how a cluster of resistance can be looked at as a red flag. Like most traders, I use support and resistance to help aid in entries and exits on the chart. Some traders will vary on what time frames they use to mark their support and resistance. I use weekly and daily, but you may use 15 minute, 10 minute, hourly charts, weekly charts, monthly, it doesn't matter. As long as we look at this the same way, a cluster of resistance above our entry level can be looked at as a red flag. In this example on ticker BHAT, we can see we had multiple resistances once we broke that resistance of 269. This was the first resistance broken, and now we have 291, above that an organic resistance at $3, then 311, 325, and 332. This would be my red flag before entering into this trade. When analyzing this chart, we can see that break of 269, then hold as support and move its way up to the next resistance of 291. In this case, that gap from 269 to 291 was the most attractive gap. Every gap then after that had an organic resistance or a weekly level in the way. So from 291 up to $3 is an organic resistance. That's only 9 cent gain there. Then from $3 to 311, there's another 10 or 11 cents there. Just isn't enough meat on the bone. We now have a huge advantage. By marking support and resistance, we can pick and choose gaps that are going to be more beneficial to us as a trader. We look for high risk to reward setups instead of these lower gaps that it possibly pose a major red flag. Like most red flags, this does not mean I won't take the trade, just means I won't be as aggressive as I normally would be. Here's a good example of ticker KZR, how it just didn't care about that cluster of resistance. Broke right through these levels, continued up to these more attractive gaps, and then just smashed through resistance all the way up to a high of 1355 from a start around 550. This was a massive move following breaking news. This is where for myself as a manager of risk, it's hard to take this trade, but I don't want to miss out. So I could always take a lottery pick once we break resistance with the same idea it then needs to hold the support. In this case, made a nice trade on KZR while protecting myself in the green. Now taking a look at ticker GOVX on the one minute chart, we can see we ticked up into resistance of 129. We got our close above confirming a bullish trend. I'd like to take a trade here, 
But the red flag is we have a cluster of resistance above this level. We have resistance at 129, then 132, 136, and 140. So this isn't a very attractive gap for me as a trader. So maybe I'd look elsewhere for a higher quality setup. Now I'd like to go over the float size and how it makes a difference in my own trading. Each one of my custom day trading scans I've built for our Discord group will have the float represented in a blue column. The float size represents how many shares are available for trading. The lower the float, the faster the move. So in price action, the stock is going to move faster on the chart up and down if it has a lower float. Typically, larger float stocks are going to be heavily traded by algorithms or computer-based trading. I look at this as a red flag. I prefer a float under 150 million shares or less. If the float size is over 150 million shares, this doesn't mean I won't take a trade, just means I want to keep this in mind as a red flag before trading. Whenever I see different groups getting excited because there's breaking news, but then I flip over and I see that the float size is so high, 300 million or maybe even over 500 million, sometimes even over a billion. Well, for myself, I just can't really get excited for the same play. Of course, it all comes down to personal preference, but my ideal setup is going to be a float under 25 million shares. For me, it's high volume, low float, and an attractive gap. This is what I look for in a trade. If I see that the stock is under 25 million share float, then this is going to be my ideal setup and I'll be more aggressive when I'm trading. Now, of course, if I see it over 150 million share float, I look at this as a red flag. Now let's have a look at some honorable mentions, or I like to call them minor red flags. I believe the lack of news, or a multi-day runner, a Twitter pump, or even a short squeeze mention can be looked at as minor red flags. Now, they won't keep me from making the trade, but they're not the ideal setup I'm looking for. I'm proud to say that despite the market conditions, we're finding opportunity every day in our Discord. I'm live in voice from 7 a.m. till 9.30 a.m. every day, going over my trades and strategy that I'm using in the current market conditions. I'm mostly focused on low float names, on high relative volume, especially with breaking news, breaking resistance to then hold a support, as I'm trading the confirmation strategy. If you feel you can benefit from our group, feel free to join the link in the description below. Until then, smash that like button, and I'll see you in the next video.